up, tank nerds and aviation nerds, I suppose, seeing as we're doing a lot of aviation related stuff. Um, but, well, welcome to the video. This is going to be part two of the ejector seat. Just doing a quick little intro because I didn't really do an intro because I've just sort of been filming this chronologically. Anyway, um, before we get into it, just to qu quickly address uh, something that I noticed in the last video. Um, yes, the ejector seat is disarmed. Um, I thought it would have been pretty obvious uh, that, that it was disarmed um, in the first place. But for those who are um, concerned, thank you for your concern, but it is in fact disarmed. So uh, the most dangerous thing on the ejector seat is probably the springs. Um, which you'll see in a little bit, uh, not not this video, maybe a future video, uh, but yes, rest assured, everything is safe. Um, and yeah, so much so that underneath here is an almost finished product, and I'm not dead yet, uh, and I've still got all my fingers. So yeah, uh, everything went well, you needn't worry. But I will see you right up next. Okay, we're back. It is next morning now. Uh, we ended up. Oh, there was a bit of hair. I thought it was a bit of black mark. Um, yeah, next morning we are back on the ejector seat. Uh, I've just taken off another bolt. That's about it. Uh, yeah. So I just took the one out of there. So this should now break away, which is really nice. Next I'll have a look at these little blocks, see if I can get them off. And then uh, I had a quick look just yesterday afternoon, just put a lever on here. It slid back down, which is good. Um, this is free. So after I've taken, you know, some of the other stuff off, I'm going to get the gantry. I'm going to wheel it in here and I'm basically going to suspend it and hopefully just slides off. If not, I'll just have to knock that down a little bit and then I'll have the... Uh, the seat free and I can get to the headrest. So yeah, that, that is current plan. Surprise, okay, voiceover so lottie time. Quick. I'm just taking these off. Uh, there's um, not really a lot to away. sort of say. This is Notice a rather short time lapse, uh, but on. pretty straightforward. Some the only issue that I really deal, had, which I'm pretty sure I mentioned at the end, is the gantry was straight. a little too so short for the seat ones. and the uh, well, and the rail well, all in one. So I actually had to do a little bit of shimmying at the end. I'm pretty sure I explained that in the next little video. Yeah, I just didn't want to ruin uh ruin the heads on them by going too hard so i just lubricated this side and these ones um a bit trickier to get to but fortunately uh because they're not sheathed into the metal itself they're a bit easier to get out so they've all loosened which is good so i'm just going to continue taking them off so i've removed these i've marked them so left top this one looks we'll see how much I can salvage from them uh, now I've got this suspended so I'm going to get a hammer and just tap it down now it should come free but we'll see obviously it's not doing it just on weight alone uh, but yeah a little tap tap here and a tap tap there and it should come off All right, <laughs> that last little bit, I'm right at its max height and I still had, you know, this last little bit to go, so I just had to angle it, but it's now off. So uh, this is pretty much all the aircraft side. So this stays when the ejector seat goes off and then everything we've got here, we can have a nice early look. 
So those are the bolts out there I need to get rid of. But all in all, looking pretty good. You know, little costas are still rolling, some of them. Yeah, that one's a bit stiff. Oh, there we go. I'm moving now. So yeah, I'll lower it back down and we'll uh, try and get that headrest off. Well, we have reached our first major problem. Now, I didn't call it major, it is, it's doable. Um, I forgot to mention, uh, I actually emailed um, the company Martin Baker about this. I, if I don't get a response, I'll probably just call them. Turns out they've got two um, offices here in Australia, which is really cool. Uh, I don't know if they can help me, but any information or, you know, bits that they might have would be really good. Uh, but the problem. So we've got it down. I've managed to get some of these nuts loose. So remembering we're, we're trying to free this because this has the majority of the detail on it. So I want to make sure this is done as perfectly as I can. Now the problem, turn the light on. I lubricated them and everything and I don't know if you can see that. See if I can try and focus it. Oh no. That. So not the nut, but the screw is rotating with it. I've done three of them just to make sure it's not a fluke. You know, sometimes these things can crack. Um, but I've done three of them just to make sure. Um, and yeah, all three are spinning. So that means these are not captive. For those who don't know, captive basically means that the thread on the other side is either a welded nut, sort of, oh, I don't know if I've got any, uh, there were some on here. But yeah, basically it means that in order to get that off, you actually need to hold the other side. The other side is where the parachute is. So, look, I've done everything in my power to try and do this without removing the parachute because that's something I wanted to do not in this situation. I wanted to do it, you know, in a mm, far cleaner manner. I am now left without a choice. So basically, I'm just going to clean up. I'm going to lay down a big blanket. So I'm going to move the chair backwards. I'm going to lay down a big blanket, nice and clean. And I'm going to have to unfurl the uh, parachute or whatever. I don't, know. I don't even know if there is a parachute in there. It looks like there is. Um, but yeah, I'm basically going to have to open the box. And surprise! Second Deep parachute. Deep voiceover, Lottie. Which, Ooh, more than yeah, one voiceover in one video. I will That's try. Really I, this rare. might be a process that I will <laughs> Anyway, uh, the reason I'm doing this is just a little way of bit of background as to why I'm, I'm doing it this expert. way. Uh, at this, this point, before. the Never manufacturer of this had not yet gotten back so to me. I'm going to um, just... Spoiler alert, they like actually do get back to me. Film as best I can as to make much sure as I would like to admit it, I can't. All the folds um, and whatever, I'm not a seamstress, uh, and as many of you have counted out, perfectly. there is a so lot of fabric involved now. in this. Uh, not least of all, a parachute, which I've never so much as been parachuting. I do know that there is a specific way that they are normally folded up in a in a backpack, a parachute bag, um, which you'll see kind of like it's kind of shoved in. If I'm being perfectly honest, as you you'll see in in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just really wanted to make sure that I wasn't damaging anything, just in case someone had to remake a lot of this. That's just the bag. It's just the bag,
little bit is the drain for the flash drive. So, all it's just kind of sort of like scrunched up. might be easier to do it this way so it's sort of on that side and that way <laughs> try not to hug my foot Ooh. oh we got here this will be so that's pushed into that corner. Oh my god. Again, I don't want to rip from anything. That's all hanging loose. Uh, it might be it's sort of tucked under there. Again, normally I'm like, <laughs> you know, I just I have no idea about these things. So I'm just trying to be as delicate as possible there's some sort of okay there's a bar in there I think if I give this a good yank it should just come out okay this is gonna be two-handed operation again back you go Back we come, so yeah, look, there's the main parachute. Now we've got all these cords down the left hand side. And uh, that's a big wound up piece. And that's what pulls you out of the seat. That's what I've got to have to get out and see. Yeah, they're not, they're not. You see, being noisy. So they're not captive. You know, oh, it's a plate in between them. <laughs> but yeah, those will just spin freely, no doubt. Yeah. Okay, well, that was a fun learning experience. I'm glad I put this down there. So I can keep it all nice and safe. I will lay it out. I just want to see it now, you know, seeing as we went to all the circuit. So I just hanged up, hung, hanged, I don't know. I thought it is, you, you hanged a person, but you hung everything up. I have one way or the other. Um, yeah, so all in all pretty good. It's got a few, like this one's got a little burn mark in it. Um, but yeah, so this is the first shoe, and then that pulls all of this out so I've got to 
hanging out for your your viewing pleasure but it looks in reasonable condition you know it might be able to there's a few little sort of bits tears up here and then yeah it goes all the way down so yeah I like doing new stuff <laughs> I honestly didn't think I would be ever restoring an ejector seat but here we are looking beautiful so yeah all right well I don't know how much of this I'll film but yeah I'm just gonna get stuck into it and it looks like I've got one two three four five ten yeah ten bolts to get out by the looks of it so yeah um, little purple dots I'm not sure what the purple dots are like really. Hmm. Curious. Yeah. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, yeah. Um, we, we've been debating color schemes, and I think we're going to go back with its original black. So it was black. We are debating between black and silver, and I think black's won out. Just because when all this is clean, provided I can get new ones, or, you know, one thing that... Excuse me, just back a little... Um, one problem with these is that these are etched on, meaning the second I put a polishing wheel on this, it'll erase it all, and you'll just be left with the brass panel, but no, no writing on it. So there's a couple of things that we can do. We can try and get this engraved, take it to a professional engraver, and they might be able to polish it all up and actually engrave it, not just etch it on. Or, and what I'm hoping, is that I've actually contacted the manufacturer and I don't know maybe they have some stuff left over we can buy because uh, no doubt this is out of date so I don't see why they would want to keep on to it but who knows you don't know unless you ask yeah I'm happy about this I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it in this blanket I'm just gonna tie it all up and put it somewhere safe okay got the headrest off very happy about that. So we got we got a fair bit of material to work with. Um, I will, oh, depending on what I feel like doing today, I might just um, kick the uh, sandblaster into gear and take a few of the small little objects and yeah, you know, get them all cleaned up. Some of this I can sort of you know free up and put in the sandblaster. So I think that's what we're gonna do. I don't believe I want to take too much more off this. There will be more stuff to come off but the, the more I can do on the little sandblaster the less I have to do um, with the pressure washer and big sandblaster which gives us better results. So yeah I think I'm just gonna start fiddling around with some of this stuff and figure it all out. I don't know how long all this is going to be but I think that's a probably good average for, for a video so I'm just going to leave it for there even though I'm going to continue working so um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this very different sort of uh, restoration jobby and uh, yeah any questions comments whatever leave them down below and I will see you on the next one bye